Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, Jamie Loney. And in this episode, I have brought on regular Eric Taylor. He will join us any moment. But until then, our guest, he's from Chicago, Illinois. He's an author, background actor, historian, and motivational speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sylvester Boyd. How are you? Going great. How's life? Life is uh, a bowl of cherries. Hmm. Interesting. So, yes. have you have you been up too much recently? Well, recently, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I always try to approach life with an optimistic approach, but negativity. Okay, right. So, what have you written any books recently? Uh, matter of fact, I've written three books that have been published. And I'm working on the fourth, which will be uh, released in come this coming August. Okay. T- tell me more about this book you've written. My book is uh, a series of books, as a matter of fact. Uh, like I said, I alluded to just a moment ago that uh, I have written uh, three books. And they're based on the life of my Aunt Estella, who was oh. born in America. Uh, Money, Mississippi, and uh, the cotton fields to a millionaire in her lifetime. She died at the age of 91. So her life was a very interesting, uh, it would be interesting for people to uh, be aware of it. Hmm. Great. And uh, what has inspired you to become an author? Well, uh, I'm up in age a little bit. Uh, I've always thought admired authors, as a matter of fact, when I was in high school and when I was in college, I always admired authors, but never thought uh, I'd pick up the pen and put it to paper. But upon the uh, passing of my aunt, I figured uh, her story was one that needed to be told. And since no one else in the family was writing a book uh, or anything about the family, it was way of uh, recording uh, her life, progress through her life. It is not only a, a book of her life, it, it's a book of America. It takes you from the, she was born in the year 1917, which was uh, just uh, after the uh, World War. And it takes you uh, through the times of horse and buggy in the South, and she's picking cotton. And then it takes you through the Great Depression, uh, in the 20s and 30s in the U.S., takes you through World War II. It takes you, you know, you know what happened in Europe during World War II, during the reign of Adolf Hitler. A historian, by the way, and so therefore there's a lot of history. So the book really, I tried to put in history. I tried to put the music of the times. I tried to put in what was going on with her in the foreground, in the music of the times, in the background, and uh, what was going on historically in the background. So it's about a three layer, I tried to cover three layers uh, or so in the book. Also the food and in, uh, in the later books that she uh, traveled from uh, Chicago to, uh, she stood on the Great Wall of China before she passed away. So she had a very interesting, uh, uh, being uh, African-American, she could not have bought the product the way she became wealthy was that her husband, my Uncle Sidney, he uh, could pass for a European. And therefore, he bought property and uh, he passed away uh, about 12 years after they got married. And so he, the property accrued it to her. Uh, why she would have never been able to uh, buy that time period in American history. Interesting. So, tell me more about your background acting work, because you told me you're a background actor, and I'm actually curious to find out what you've done as an actor, like in the background in like television work. Oh, well, I've been with uh, some of the biggest uh, stars on the planet. Uh, Regina King, who won the Academy Award out in the background there. Uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker, uh, just a whole host of uh, who's who in the movies uh, in America. And uh, not only that, uh, 
you know, background, let me give you a little bit about background. Background or extras, or some people call them extras. Um, without us, the show look realistic. We're the people that are walking down the city street as a pedestrian. We are the people who are looking at a fire scene. We're the people at a train station. Uh, a train station with just the principal actors doesn't uh, look too good. Or a stadium, if you're having a baseball game or any kind of sporting event, doesn't look too good with just two or three people in the stadium, which would be the principal. So we kind of back up the principal actors. It's a very interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, because you do get to go places that uh, the average person would never see. Here in Chicago, I've been to the Sip Opera House. I actually was in the locker room of Michael Jordan. I've been in the Chicago Bears locker room. So we go into places that normally as an ordinary citizen, I would not have been able to do. Great. Uh, what, what else do you like about being a background actor? Uh, well, like, like I said, I'm dealing, I can look at TV, matter, as a matter of fact, uh, just two weeks ago, I was on uh, of, uh, Chicago PD, and my sister called me from uh, Michigan, and she said, you're on TV tonight, and I had almost forgotten about it. I mean, I've actually done over a hundred back uh, episodes in several movies, and you know, a couple of commercials, so really, it's in the field of entertainment, and uh I'm sitting next to or acted with the biggest stars in, in Hollywood. So it, it's very, very interesting. I mean, I eat, eat where they eat. Yeah, we're on a ship. It's a long day a lot of times and sometimes a very short day. It can go anywhere from uh, generally the day starts out with about an eight hour day. But I've been on set uh, three hours and the director says, that's it. Your part is done. You're I get paid for the whole day. Uh, other times, I've been on as much as uh, sixteen hours in a day. So uh, it can be it can be as exhausting. You you shoot several times a scene. You don't just shoot one scene one time. You shoot it several times until it's the uh, to the liking of the director uh, or the the person who is in in charge of the movie uh, to give you a wrap. See, that's rap. That scene's rap. We go to the next thing. So it, I learned the ins and outs of movie making. I've been, you see the prop department, you see the wardrobe department. Uh, I was dressed for a, a scene on Empire in a $10,000 suit, which I don't think I could afford that. But uh, you get a chance to do and see and go places that you never, as just a person uh, that was not into the. Or, or just ob observing a movie. Okay, great. Eric, do you want to ask any questions to Sylvester? Eric? Hello? Eric Taylor, are you there? Well, I guess he's not there. So anyway, what, what was the high and low points throughout your whole life as both an actor and an author? Oh, well, uh, as an author, I get a chance to into into my mind's eye, as I say, you have to put words on a page. You have to be able to uh, see things that you've seen, observed, and are aware of, or are informed of by reading, or by actually or by actually experiencing. Uh, so uh, it, it's been very interesting. I mean, some of the things actually uh, took me points in my life that uh, it took me back, like walking the path with my aunt. Uh, she was like a second mother to me. She had no kids of her own, so she kind of took me under her wing. And uh, uh, I, a lot of the book is I actually lived the experiences in the book. The first book uh, included in because, of course, I was not born until the year 1943, which was in the middle of World War II. From that point on, from say the 19, uh, late 40s uh, on in the book, uh, I'm not only observing part of my life. Uh, interesting. Uh, my uncle Sidney, who was her husband, I said they could pass for white. I actually took, he died of uh, cancer and I actually took care of him. And when I was 12 years old, I, uh, I was actually uh, him when she had to go to work. Uh, 
on her job. So she wanted somebody to be there to, to tend to him. So it was it was really a, a real uh, walk back through my own life. And of course, uh, I'm, I feel that I'm given honor of being the person that she was during her life. Uh, she influenced me a lot. She took me to plays and uh, um, she was very uh, a cultural, I would say middle, middle class, and which in, in a time that uh, in America, African-Americans, most the, the population were not experiencing the life that she experienced. Uh, actually uh, had uh, lived in a neighborhood where one of the congressmen, uh, Dawson, lived down the block from uh, her and uh, uh, she was a friend of her daughter, his daughter, and uh, we actually, he would come over, her daughter would come over for dinner. So I was, I was local. Uh, I've been able to observe in my lifetime living with all cultures. I've traveled personally uh, quite extensively from Denmark to Honolulu, from Honolulu to Venezuela to Canada, and I'm not going to bore you with every place I've been, but I can say I've traveled extensively. Uh, so I have a perspective on the world made the average person will never get. Okay. Excellent. So I also heard you're a motivational speaker. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was just a keynote speaker at the uh, event the other day at I haven't been doing a lot of personal because, of course, the pandemic uh, that we are unfortunate to be a witness to kind of uh, uh, sort of put a damper on the person-to-person contact. But in the last, uh, I'd say last month, I've been getting back out and I've been doing speaking again. And I have several engagements on my calendar. I have a TV appearance uh, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, so I, I have several uh, my calendar starting to fill back up and uh, of course uh, it's interesting to be able to pass on some of the knowledge that I have to, the, to a younger generation uh, my so I've been here a bit seen a lot and uh, as you get older you want to pass the knowledge uh, to the younger group coming behind you what I've been trying to do uh, in the last few years. I've also been a substitute teacher. Uh, I've worked for American Airlines. I was the uh, third African-American crew chief at O'Hare Field back in the 60s. So uh, now I was in charge of load- the, the crews that loaded aircraft in that position. Had not been filled by African-American, uh, but three people before me, two people before me. So uh, I've you know, been sort of historic. I'm a historian, and uh, I love history. And I've been fortunate enough to travel and see uh, almost every monument that, uh, or every uh, uh, monument and every uh, uh, place of very important, like house. I've been there, uh, uh, the Capitol building, uh, uh, Mount Rushmore. The Golden Gate Bridge, uh, the Statue of Liberty, the Alamo, and I'm not going to bore you there because I've seen most of every important institution in America uh, that would be uh, noteworthy. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate, been very blessed. Uh, like I said, background acting, I've only done that for about 10 years of my life. I've been a businessman, so I've had many, many, many uh, different occupations and have been fortunate enough to. Uh, to, to participate in many fields. Uh, being a businessman, I was in a business for, for uh, 20 years, advertising. So living, what longevity allows you to do is many, is many times experience many different walks of life. Uh, that's what it allowed me to do. That, that's, a, that's a lot of things to do. An author, background actor, motivational speaker. Wow. That's, how, how do you balance all of that throughout your whole week, month or so? Yes. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, when I pass on, uh, uh, left the world a better place than I found it. That's what my grandmother always said. Okay. Great. And uh, mm-hmm. anything else? 
Yeah, well, you know, my philosophy is uh, my biggest word is uh, love and respect. And uh, respect, uh, my books are always talk, you know, respect all through my book. I have a sermon in the one of the characters uh, in the book. So some that goes through the books are uh, them going to church, in which I did uh, quite a bit. You know, the sermon that the reverends give, which comes from me, the words I'd like to say. And uh, the biggest thing was respect, because we in the world today, uh, not only today, but all through history, being a historian, I found that that is one of the things that is missing most. Respect for your fellow man, no matter, from, uh, no matter what skin color, no matter re what religion, uh, no culture, we don't respect one another. We, we, we tend to disrespect one another. And that's why we are today, uh, uh, where we are, well, with what's going on in the world today with Russia and Ukraine uh, and all over the world, there's, there's conflict because one nation does not respect another nation. One skin color does not another skin color. One economic group does not respect another economic group. One age group does not, and I can go on and on. So uh, I think respect is the word and love and respect are, are the two things that we should all practice as much as possible. Disrespect will always get resentment. If you disrespect me, I will did resent you. I may not tell you to your face, but I will resent you. And I have every right to resent you if you disrespect me. And uh, I think that's uh, something the world needs to learn. Uh, I don't think it is, will ever learn it. It hasn't from Napoleon to uh, Stalin to Lenin to, I mean, we, we go through history with history's villains, Hitler uh, with the villains. So I'm a historian. And the, when I open a history book, I see the, the villains through history and I've seen a disrespect to history. And uh, that's uh, my biggest word. If we could all learn to respect one another, the golden rule is do unto others if they do unto you, which is a, the, the mat, respect one like you would want to be respected. Yeah, I, I agree. I absolutely agree with that. So, from now, where do you see yourself in 20 years? Well, I said I'm 78. I hope I'm still here in 20 years. <laughs> uh, but uh, I see myself as being, well, I'm a grandfather and a great-grandfather now. I see myself if I'm here to be an old man that can look back on, on my life and say, uh, I think I did a job and uh, I'd want somebody to pat me on the back and say a job well done. Uh, and I want people to say, well, he got everything in life. He didn't miss much of it and he enjoyed his life. So I'd be reflective in 20 years and I'd be an old man, of course, 20 years, I'm 87 now, I'd be 90 approaching uh, my uh, centennial year. But uh, hopefully, uh, I, like I said, I'd like to leave the world a better place than I found it. I think, and as I look back, I can see the lives that I have touched and, uh, and, and I, I do see where I'm leaving a good mark. That's, that's one of my biggest things is to look at my kids and my, grand, my grandkids and children that I taught and, and hope that they learn something and see uh, what I've imparted on them. Knowledge taken to the grave is wasted knowledge. Knowledge that is given is uh, what it should be. So that's the way I look. Great. So what was life for you growing up? Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned my aunt. Uh, I really had a charmed childhood. Uh, very fortunate. Uh, had a extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, grandmothers, uh, great aunts. I mean, it was such an extended family. So if I didn't like what my mother did, I went, like what I did, I went to my grandmother and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, had a room, uh, she, she owned a house on, on Lake Park in Chicago. And I had a room in her house where there was a, a model train, a line. And that kept me busy a lot of my childhood because uh, I, I love my train and I'd go in the room and I could stand there for hours building towns and cities or whatever model railroading does. 
we went to plays. Uh, she took me to plays, you know, the King and I, uh, some of the major plays. To this day, I love plays. To this day, I do paint by numbers because back in that time as a child, I, you know, we'd get go downtown and she'd buy a paint by number set. So what kind of whatever I'd point out that I want kind of spoiled. And I've also lived in, like I said, all cultures in, in, in the south side of Chicago, uh, Cook County Hospital the, in uh, predominantly African-American, well, pretty much all African-American community when I was a small child. At the age of about 12, we moved to Chinatown. Uh, uh, there was a housing, public housing development that uh, that my family moved into a brand new building at that time. It's the year 1955. Uh, it was mixed. That, that, I call it the Lou Union community. There was Asians, there were Blacks, there was Italian, there were everybody in that community. So I learned to live with other groups. So my uh, best friends were doing uh, um, those. Asians. Uh, then my family, my mother, moved from public housing because they saved enough money and moved to Michigan for about 40 acres of land. And my stepfather built a house with us from week to week. And when they moved in, they didn't have a mortgage. So, and I went to a high school called Allegan High School in Allegan, Michigan, which was 95% white. Uh, so, I've, I've had the experience of living in all African American mixed society, and also uh, with a majority white society. Uh, so basically, that's an experience that most people don't get because we don't live together. We don't. We seem to be in the world. It's not, that's not just an American thing. That's a that's a worldly thing. That one racial group does not uh, live well with another racial group. Uh, we should, the only way you experience who a person is is to live near them or to interact with them. When you don't interact with another group, you find yourself uh, suspicious of that group or listening to rumors or building a false image of a group. Uh, my uh, education is, like I alluded to before, is in geography and history, and I studied uh, the American Indian, Mexican history. Uh, naturally, we get human, European history and African American history. But what I found, every group in the world contributes to the world, and every group in the world does the same thing. And every person on earth does, they are born, they live, they die. So that's, uh, you know, that that's the picture. I, um, those three things, everybody goes through that same process, some longer than others, but and some do more with it than others. But if you want to see what, what life's all about, go in a cemetery and you see a, a dash say, I would be born in 1943, and there'll be another dash whenever I uh, be, pass away. So, I mean, life is to be enjoyed, is to be experienced, and it's to be um, to help your fellow man. That's uh, sort of who I am and what I think we all should be. And if we did that, the world would be a much better place and we wouldn't have the violence of, that I've seen throughout history, the records and the carnage of, of lives with war, etc. Yeah, incredible. So well, what's in store for you? Like what, what, what you got planned on to do next? Uh, well, next, uh, um, well, I want to travel some more. I've, I've been on seven cruises. I'd like to win this... Uh, Thing. I'd like to go on a, uh, go to Europe. I haven't toured Europe yet, yet. I've been to Denmark, which is Scandinavia, but not uh, England, etc. The UK. Uh, I'd like to travel some more and write books. I like my books are right now. There's some talk of becoming a mood motion picture, so I'm in talks with that. And so, with people to put that together, it's a it's a long process. Uh, to maybe write a play, become a playwright. So there's, there's things I want to do. There's never a time, as long as I have my health and strength, that I won't have something to do and, and not something to look forward to. Because if you don't have a have a destination, you can't arrive at a destination. Uh, if you don't have a destination, you're like a ship on the ocean without a without a port to call into. So that's my first. 
Okay, yeah. So, what what book, book which book is about to turn into a motion picture? Well, the whole series is a series. It's a series. It may oh, be a, okay. it may be a motion picture, or it may become. I'm not sure which way we're going with that um, TV miniseries because it is it it covers a life that goes from the cotton field Mississippi in the U.S. to uh, to uh, the jet age. My aunt actually walked on the uh, Great Wall of China, so she traveled. Uh, she traveled extensively. Uh, she had the funding to do that because of, of her real estate investments. Right, and in terms of in terms of writing a play, what do you think you want to write a play about? Well, it would be about my, take the story into a play. You know, it, it, I can in, I can envision in my head right now what the play would look like and how the various scenes and so it takes me toward that just as it just as much as sitting down to write, it takes me toward the scenes of the cabin down south uh her coming to the city the uh you know the travel so it would in, in the music in the play i would you know going from like ragtime to hip-hop you know that's a life and, and there's, there's all between, you know, the Charleston and the twenty. So in a play, you would be able to do all these things, the church scenes. I can see all those scenes in my head. Okay, great. So have you ever thought about doing anything else beyond what you're doing right now? <laughs> I don't think I could do much. I mean, there's always something you could do. But no, the things that I do now make me happy. Uh, they keep, travel keeps me uh, writing. Is, it keeps me interesting. Uh, you know, if I'm doing, if we go into the movie, uh, actually to be able to deal with actors and actresses, that's very interesting. So, you know, really uh, at my age, I'm, I'm busy for my age and I've, I'm pretty much always had something to do that was positive. I always try to think positive. Now, life is not a bowl of cherries to anybody, including me, but I always try to have a positive mental attitude. Okay, excellent. And, and, and to be honest, I, I find it quite impressive how you managed to become be a, an author, background actor, motivational speaker. I, I, I'm quite surprised how someone can do that many stuff at once. Like, I'm been managing with, like, two social media accounts, uh, my acting course, uh, my drama school auditions, and at the same time, doing this podcast. And it's, nice, it's nice seeing people who are quite the multitaskers. It's, it's incredible what the things that you're doing right now. I just find it quite amazing. Well, the main thing is not to be afraid to take the next step. If I see something I want to do when I started a business, I said I want to start a business, so I started a business. Writing, I just sit down, my aunt passed away, saying I'm going to write a book about her. So I think what holds most people back is they're afraid to take a leap into the unknown. Me, I, the, the unknown challenges me. I want to uh, test, can I do this? I want to test myself against whatever the world puts against me. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that is all we have for this episode. It, it was absolutely having great having you here, Sylvester, talking about the books you've written, your experience as a background actor, uh, your, your motivational speaking work. Wow, it's, it was a lot to cover and talk about. It's quite amazing. Yeah, and in, in my the, for your listeners, they can get my book at boydbooks.net. They can see my website, hear interviews with, with me, boydbooks.net. S Y L V E S T E R books, O O K S dot net. Okay, fabulous. And until next time, stay tuned for more.